Hi students, today we are going to learn a new lesson, Unit 4, with the photographer. And the author of this lesson is Stephen P. H. Uh, Butler Leacock. And he was a Canadian teacher, political scientist, a writer, and a humorist. You know, he was a Canadian teacher, he was a political scientist, he was a writer, and also a humorist. He writes humorous stories. He was educated at Upper Canada College in Toronto and the University of Toronto, from which he graduated in 1891. He received a fellowship in political economy and took his PhD in 1903. Between the year 1915 and 1925, he was the best known English speaking humorist in the world. So just make note of this particular uh, duration of years, 1915 and 1925, between these years, he was the best known English speaking humorist. He is known for his light humor along with criticism of people's mistakes, follies, sunshine sketches of a little town, Arcadian adventures, weather, idle rich, economic prosperity in the British Empire, the dawn of Canadian history, moonbeams from the large lunacy, the unsolved riddle of social justice, my discovery of England, wit, wit, and dry humor are some of his brilliant writings. Okay, this is all about the author Stephen Leacock. Let's move on to the glossary. Drooping. Drooping means bending. If a person seems to be drooping, is not standing upright. He bends his body. No bending unwarrantable that means illegal or wrongful pursuits its quest pursuits quest frantic mad and desperate without any hope grave is very serious not making any jokes very serious boundless which means limitless Ceased, stopped, trifle, bit, staggering, shaking or vibrating, animation, it's not uh, a frozen thing, but it's an excited, excitement, beckoned is called, superficies is out of face, withering scorn is disapproving hatred, depict means shows or gives a picture of something reconcile is to comfort and heal emboss cause to bulge out bobble something of no value okay let's move to the story it just starts a short story uh, nowadays what do we do do we go uh, to the photograph studio to take photographs we have all facilities of taking photographs with our mobile phones right so here is a story with the photographer where the narrator visits a studio to have his photograph taken and his experience with a professional photographer turns out to be an unforgettable one Okay, let's see how the narrator brings out his experience with a photographer, with a photographer. Okay, so I want my photograph taken. Who says this? Only two characters are involved in this story. One is the narrator, that is the author. The other person is the photographer. So the narrator wants his photograph taken, he said. The photographer, the, that means the photographer, looked at him without enthusiasm. He was, this is the narration, description of the photographer. He was a drooping man. 
in a gray suit with the dim eye of a natural scientist. But there is no need to describe him. Everybody knows what a photographer is like. Okay, so the photographer, that means the photographer, looked at the narrator without any enthusiasm. No interest was shown towards the customer, that is the narrator. How was the photographer? He was a drooping man. He was not a, uh, an upright person or a very erect person. He was a drooping man, a bent man. He was in a gray suit and his eye was dim uh, as if you look at a scientist. They are always moody, right? They always think something in their mind. But there is no need to describe him because everybody knows what a photographer is, photographer is like. The photographer told uh, the narrator, sit there and wait. I waited an hour. So during his waiting, what are the magazines he read? I read the latest companion for 1912, the girls magazine for 1902, the infants journal for 1888, I began to see that I had done an unwarrantable thing in breaking in on the privacy of this man's scientific pursuits with a face like mine. So during his waiting, he reads, you know, ladies' companion, girls' magazine, and infants' journal, all related to ladies' magazines are there. He was reading all those things in spite of dislike or liking you know he started reading and while he was reading he had a thought whether he had disturbed his privacy that the, the photographer's privacy with with such a face you know he, he is thinking of himself uh, with a face like mine am i breaking in on the privacy of this man's scientific pursuits he was looking like a scientist and he must be doing something uh, of his research, maybe photographic uh, research. After an hour, the photographer opened the inner door. So how long he was waiting? Almost an hour he was waiting there. Okay? And after that one hour, he says, come in. He said, severely, I went into the studio. That, that means the narrator went into the studio. Sit down, said the photographer. I sat down in a beam of sunlight filtered through a sheet of factory cotton hung against a frosted skylight. So generally, uh, people are made to sit in a place where the light is good. So that is why those days, uh, we do not know whether they had some flashlights or something like that. So he was made to sit in a beam of sunlight. Okay, then... The photographer rolled a machine into the middle of the room and crawled into it from behind. So, the, the machine, the camera was taken into the middle of the room. And once it was done, he went behind the camera. He was only in it a second. Just time enough for one look at me and then... He was out again, tearing at the cotton sheet and the window panes with a hooked stick, apparently mad for light and air. Frantic mean mad and desperate. So, within, that means uh, they used to cover their face with a black cloth, covering the camera and also themselves to take a snap or a click of the picture. Okay, but he was there inside only for a second. He came out as if he had no air to breathe at all, you know. Okay, then he crawled back into the machine again and drew a little black cloth over himself. This time, he was very quiet in there. I knew that he was praying and I kept still. So you can just uh, see how that black cloth and how a photographer stands, how the machine is brought into the middle of the room. And here there is uh, the photo, that means the narrator, Stephen Leacock, sitting there. And this is the photographer. And 
This man crawled back into the mission again and drew a little black cloth over himself. You can see that here. This time he was very quiet in there. So Stephen Laycock thought he was praying. So he kept quiet and still. When the photographer, when the photographer came out at last, he looked very serious and shook his head. No. And what did he say? The face is quite wrong, he said. And for that, the photograph, that means the narrator says like this, I know, I answered quietly, I have always known it. So what does the commenter, the photographer says? The face, that means the author's face is quite wrong. It's not good. And for that, he says, I know that. He sighed. He gave a long breath. I think he said the face would be better three quarters full. That means his camera mission is narrow and his face is too big. And he feels if it is three quarters full, that would be nice. So he says his face is out of size. And he says, I'm sure it would, I said enthusiastically, for I was glad to find that the man had such a human side to him. So would yours. In fact, I continued, how many faces one sees that are apparently hard, narrow, limited, but the minute you get them three quarters full, they get wide, large, almost boundless. And here, as a photographer, he says, People with different faces, they come here. If they, uh, they are narrow in their faces, that means that their faces are narrow, it can be made wide. If they are very, very uh, limited, it can be made large. So the photographer with all the techniques, he, he changes, he adjusts the faces. But the photographer had ceased to listen. He came over and took my head in his hands and twisted it sideways. I thought he meant to kiss me and I closed my eyes. But the photographer had ceased to listen. Here, you see, the photograph photographer did not uh, listen to what the narrator says. He came over and took uh, the narrator's head in his hands and twisted it. Just imagine, he's holding his head very close to his uh, face and he's twisting this way and that way so that the uh, narrator thought he was going to kiss him and he closed his eyes. But I was wrong. That means the narrator was wrong. Actually, what was happening? See, let's see. He twisted my face as far as it would go, and then stood looking at it. He sighed again. I don't like the head, he said. So, again, he's not happy with the narrator's face. He says, I don't like your head. And then he went back to the machine and took another look. Mm, he's not happy with this, with something. And he asked him, open the mouth a little, he said. So, the narrator started to do so. That means Stephen Leacock started opening his mouth. Ah! Oh. He said, close it. Then he looked again. So Stephen Leacock closed his mouth. The ears are bad. He said, droop them a little more. Thank you. Now the eyes, roll them in under the lids. Put the hands on the knees, please. And turn the face just a little upward. Yes, that's better. Now just expand the lungs. So, and hump the neck, that's it, and just contract the waist. Ha! And twist the hip up toward the elbow now. I still don't quite like the face. It's just a trifle too full, but. So, when you go to a studio to take a passport size photo, just imagine sometimes the photographer, that means the photographer, asks you to uh, change the direction of the head. You know, go little left or right or up or down. So and so, this man is giving a lot of instruction like ears are bad, uh, uh, put your head down and roll your eyes under the lids. You put the hands on the knees and turn the face just a little upward. Uh, 
take a deep breath and expand the lungs and uh, uh, your your waist is too broad just contract it just contract your waist and after giving all these instructions and finally he says i still what he says i still don't like the face i i still don't quite like the face you know uh, he is not happy with his face what happened then i swung myself round on the stool stop you know how long he can be patient for all his bad comments stop i said with the emotion but i think with dignity this face is my face it is not yours it is mine i have lived with it for 40 years and i know it's false i know it's our out of drawing i know it wasn't made for me but it's my face the only one i have i was conscious of a break in my voice so the narrator got irritated and he just got up saying stop this face is my face it's not yours you know while reading itself you might have understood you now how animated and how uh, anger personified that person should be you know he became very angry i was conscious of a break in my voice but i went on such as it is i've learned to love it i know this face is not good it is out of drawing but i know because i live with this face for how many years 40 years so uh, at his 40th age it's happening and this is my mouth not yours these years of mine and if your mission is too narrow here i started to rise from the seat so you got very much tensed and he wanted to just rise up from the seat that is when they heard a sound what is that sound sick that means the photograph was taken the photographer had pulled the string the photograph was taken i could see the mission still staggering from the shock those days those mission after that particular click it staggers it vibrates from the shock so when he was giving a still the photograph was not taken but he when he was animated when he was almost angry when he was excited to get up with all his uh, eyes nose mouth with different uh, uh, no uh, poses the photograph was taken i think said the photographer pursing his lips in a pleased smile that i caught the features just in a moment of animation is telling i caught all your features your eyes your nose in a moment of animation it's not going to be still it's not going to be a still pose it's going to be an animated pose all his eyes roll with different expressions so i said bitingly features hey you didn't think i could animate them i suppose but let me see the picture the photographer wanted to see the picture immediately but don't forget you know those days are not the days of now as soon as you take a selfie immediately you can see the photograph not that you know it has to be developed oh there's nothing to see it he said i have to develop the negative first because only you can see the negative he has to develop it will take some time so come back on saturday and i'll let you see a proof of it so the narrator was asked to come on saturday to have a look at the proof on saturday i went back okay what happens on saturday the photographer beckoned me in i thought he seemed quieter and graver than before i think too there was a certain pride in his manner so this time on saturday the photographer seemed to be quieter and very calm cool uh you know so there is a certain pride in his manner so the way he behaves seems to be okay he unfolded the proof of a large photograph and we both looked at it in silence so just imagine the narrator should be very anxious to look at his own image and as soon as he looked at the photograph he asked a question what is that 
Is it me? I asked. Yes, he said quietly. It's you. And we went on looking at it. He started looking at every feature. First of all, at the eyes. The eyes, I said hesitatingly, don't look very much like mine. You know, everyone knows his own eyes. You know, we stand uh, in front of the mirror and we know all those things. Oh no, I've retouched them. They come out splendidly, don't they? What is he telling? He retouched his eyes. His eyes are not his own eyes. He has retouched. Fine, I said. But surely my eyebrows are not like that. No, said the photographer, with a momentary glass at my face, the eyebrows are removed. We have a process now, the Delphi, for putting in new ones. You will notice here where we have applied it to carry the hair away from the brow. I don't like the hair low on the skull. So, eyes have been retouched. What happened to the brows now? He says he has a process. What is that process? Delphi to remove the existing eyebrows and putting in new ones. Because he says, I don't like the hair low on the skull. From the bro, there are some hair just falling down. So he removed completely the eyebrow and put in a new ones. Oh, you don't, don't you? I said, no, he went on. I don't care for it. I like to get the hair clear back to the uh, superficies and make out a new bro line. Okay, what about the mouth? The third one. What about the mouth? I said with a bitterness that was lost on the photographer. Is that mine? Okay, forget about the eyes, forget about the bros. Now they are looking at the mouth. Next feature. It's adjusted a little. This man did not leave any feature of his face. He adjusted even his mouth. Yours is too low. Your mouth is too low. So I found I couldn't use it. This mouth doesn't fit for this face. So, I adjusted your mouth a little, he says. The ears, though, I said, strike me as a good likeness. They are just like mine. Uh, narrator seems to be a little happy because the ears looked as if his own ears. Yes, said the photographer. Yes, said the photographer thoughtfully. That's so, but I can fix that all right in the print. We have a process now, the sulfide for removing the ears entirely. <laughs> Students, don't think that he has left out the ears. He says he can fix that all right in the print. You know, now it's a proof only in the print that that will be removed completely. Ears are not fitting for the trace, it seems. He wanted to remove the ears entirely with a process called sulfide. And he got irritated. He lost all his tempers and says like this, Listen, I interrupted, drawing myself up and animating my features to their full extent. So he is, he is, his face is full of expressions. In the expression of anger and speaking with a withering scorn. That should have blasted the man on the spot. What are the words he said? Listen, I came here for a photograph. A picture something which would have looked like me. I wanted something that would depict my face as the heaven gave it to me. Humble though the gift may have been. He says, here I come to take a photograph which should look like me. Which should be a photograph like me. What for I wanted that? I wanted something that would depict my face as a Heaven gave it to me. How God gave me my face, I want the same face to be in the photograph. Though the gift may have been, you know, humble though the gift may be, how simple my face might have been, I don't worry about that, I want it. What for I want that? See, this is very important. I wanted something that my friends might keep after my death. You know, after a person's death, if at all, someone wants to remember a person, it should be through a photograph. So reconcile them to my loss after my death. You know, just 
what is the meaning of re reconcile to uh, you know to comfort if they look at my photograph they will be remembering this is my dear brother my dear friend is so and so he looks like this just they can have uh, and uh, can be comforted even though i die it seems that i was mistaken i wanted to have a photograph taken which can be kept even after my death but i came to a wrong place i was mistaken what i wanted is no longer done so no longer done you know whatever you have done is of no use go on then with your brutal work because this is of no value to me i don't want this one you know you are doing a brutal job take your negative or whatever it is you call it dip it in sulfide bromide oxide cowhide anything you like remove the eyes correct the mouth adjust the face restore the lips reanimate the necktie and reconstruct the waistcoat you coat it with an inch of gloss you want to shine it you shine it you want to shade it you shade it you want to emboss it you do anything you want you want to emboss it you want to uh, cause something bulge out or gild it or till even you acknowledge that it is finished till you get satisfied with a photograph whatever you want to do with this photograph you do you use all sorts of techniques then when you have done all that keep this photograph for yourself and your friends they may value it to me it is but a worthless bubble bubble means what a thing of no value i broke into tears and left just imagine you know he came to take a photograph which would look like him but that uh, the person who took photograph the photographer used all his techniques and he wanted to adjust everything almost all his features which doesn't look like the narrator at all and he said to me it is but a worthless bubble it is useless poor guy right he broke into tears and left so that was the case in those days you know to take a photograph that was a painful thing but now you have all facilities of taking photograph and we just see the photograph within no time so i hope you understand this is a story written by stephen leacock stephen leacock uh, with a sense of humor it's a very simple story uh, well uh, narrated i hope you understand this thank you